I welcome you aviation students in today's series of lecture we would start our series of lecture on module 6 that is material and hardware students it's very important that uh, we must have a good knowledge about the materials and hardware related to the aircraft materials are those materials which are being the main constituent of the aircraft these can be ferrous aircraft metals, non-ferrous aircraft metals and somehow we could use some composite materials for the construction of aircraft. And hardware means different hardware is being constructed and different hardware like rivets and uh, some other bolts and arts, screws and some other hardwares are being used to construct the aircraft. So we would have a good knowledge, we should have a good knowledge as a aviation maintenance technician to know about what kind of materials we are maintaining and what is the main constituent of the aircraft construction. At the same time we must have a good knowledge about the hardware related to the aircraft. So let's start. Gentlemen, in this series of lecture we would study about the ferrous aircraft metals, non-ferrous aircraft metals and composite materials as well and the mechanical sh shapings of the metals that how we can convert a pure metal into different shapes and at the end we would study about the testing of metals. Gentlemen what is ferrous metals? Aircraft materials Common steels used in aircraft. We would study about the characteristics of aircraft ferrous metals, properties of ferrous metals, identification of ferrous metals, and then we would study about the heat treatment and application of alloy steels as far as the ferrous metals are concerned. Before going on to the ferrous metals, we must have a good knowledge about this thing that the ferrous metals are those metals where the principal element of their, those, these metals are ferrous means iron is the principal constituent of the ferrous metals. So we must have a good knowledge that from where this iron ore comes. Dear students, this iron ore comes from the magnetite and hematite. Magnetites and hematites are these two ores which produces which are being used to produce the iron when we purify these magnetites and the hematites we get pig iron and at the end we get a slag for the production of iron from hematite and magnetite we use a blast furnace there are different types of furnaces but the most <clears throat> widely used furnace is the blast furnace where we can use where we can produce the iron gentlemen a blast furnace is 60 meter high and 7.5 meter in diameter and it has the capacity to produce 2000 to 10,000 tons of iron per day it's a high quantity of production of iron the iron ore is first washed and then added to the blast furnace together with the high quality coke, low in sulfur content and limestone which combines with the impurities and forms a slag. Means to say we add iron ore, high quality coke which must have a low in sulfur content with the limestone and this produce a slag which has some kind of impurities. During charging, the double bell arrangement prevents gases escaping. The oxygen in the air causes the coke to burn furiously, generating heat and producing carbon monoxide gas which reduces the ore to metal. Means to say that carbon monoxide is very important factor which produces the pure metal. The chemical reduction of iron ore by carbon monoxide gas arises from the burning coke. 
here we are having a practical figure of the blast furnace a blast furnace is practically i have told you earlier that 60 meter high and 7.5 meter in diameter and can produce from 2000 to the 10000 tons of iron per day gentlemen here is a practical example here we can put our ore as the iron ore is put into that the temperature is being as go into the base the temperature is rising and the upper section 200 degree centigrade and in the lowermost section we are having the 1600 degree centigrade and here is the point collection point where we get the slag at the same time we are having a escape for the gases gentlemen iron which is the heaviest product drip up to the bottom of the furnace the lighter slag floats on top of the iron the iron is tapped out from the bottom molten iron is cast into small molds known as pigs pig iron is then refined to produce cast iron as we get the pig and the cast iron from the cast iron we would convert that into steel how we convert the pig iron into a steel we will study in this part of lecture dear student steel is made from pig iron in modern steel making larger amount of scrap steel can be used up if required Normally steel is made using the basic oxygen process or the electric furnace process. A typical basic oxygen furnace consists of a vessel or a converter holding up to 400 tons of metal. The charge consists of up to 40% scrap steel, lime and molten pig iron. Oxygen is then blown at the surface of the molten charge from a water cooled lance. This is lowered through the mouth of the converter to within 0.5 meters of the surface of the metal. The impurities in the metal are oxidized during the blow which lasts about 15 minutes.